Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to show you how to do the tune-up kit on the steel chainsaw MS290. So I've had this. This is the Farm Boss chainsaw. I've had it for oh about nine years. It says Farm Boss. It's got an 18-inch um, bar on it. It's one of the best chainsaws I, I think they make because, man, it has been through some rough stuff. But anyway, it needs a tune-up kit. So I went to the steel. Unfortunately, you got to get the stuff from the steel dealers. But they didn't need a serial number or anything. They just needed to know it was an MS290, and this is an MS290 kit, service kit. So here's what comes in the kit. It looks like an air filter, spark plug, and that's a fuel filter. It goes in the fuel tank. Also, mine's been getting hard to start. So hopefully this will fix getting hard to start. But we're going to take this cover off. Make sure the chainsaw is nice and cooled down. So just turn that, and this cover should come off. There's your air filter. We're going to get a screwdriver. These just unscrew. Now, one thing you may want to do is blow all this off. Before you begin, you're probably going to, I already blew mine off. You're going to have sawdust everywhere. And before you start working on this, blow it off with compressed air. Okay, so those nuts or those screws, they stay with it. And this just pulls off. Yeah, see? I've even got more stuff. So see, I've got a really bad thing going on here. I don't want that stuff to go into the carburetor. Okay, so now I got that off. I want to use a, I want to use a vacuum cleaner. Okay, so it helps to have an old toothbrush to kind of get flick some, some of the stuff away. Very critical. That's the intake to the carburetor. You do not want to get anything down there. But we have to have the air filter off, so I'm going to put some paper in there to prevent anything from going down there. Okay, very critical. I've got some paper stuffed down there. I'm also going to stuff some paper in there, too. Okay, got my closed off. We're going to take this. We're going to do the spark plug first. So if you don't want to do the spark plug, you don't have to do any of this. But take that little thing, just pulls off. We're going to pull this off. Okay, so those boots, they can be on there a little bit, but it should just pull straight back. There's the spark plug. Again, clean this area, because when we take this spark plug out, we don't want anything getting down in the engine. Very, very important to keep this stuff clean. But unfortunately, this area gets really, really dirty. Okay, so to, you need a, a deep well, three quarters of an inch, half drive, or three eighths of drive will work fine. Okay, so put your socket on there. Again, three quarters. It should fit on there real good. It's not super tight. Now again, be careful taking this off. You don't want anything to go down in the engine. Okay, so here comes the plug. Yeah, the plug doesn't look extremely bad, but I'm going to change it anyway. It's a Bosch R10. So let's see what we get inside this kit. There's the air filter. It comes with two new screws. Again, there's the fuel filter. Now there's the Bosch. Well, this says NGK. And this is this is this is what came with it. So looks the same. And now we got to set the gap. So here we got the manual MS290. It talks about the spark plug gap. It's between the electrode and the thing that comes around. Then we look in the specifications. Electro gap 0 0.02 inches or 0.5 millimeter. Okay, so gapping a spark plug, you can use feeler gauges, these, these little things, or sometimes you can find something that looks like this. This is a little too big for the, what, I, what I need. So here I've got this says 0 0.02, and it'll say millimeters, 0.5. So I'm going to make sure that that, and it's gapped perfect. That's nice. They ship them gapped perfect. But if not, you can use this tool and you can put it on that electrode and you can, you want to tilt this part, this hook part, you want to move it up or down. 
or closer to the electrode without touching the electrode and without damaging the electrode. Now we've got it gapped. It comes gapped, that's really good. Now we've got this, so this washer. When we put this in, we wanna collapse that washer. See how this one is kinda of collapsed? It's a, called a crush washer, and that's what forms a good seal. So when we screw this down, we're gonna screw it down until it stops, but then we gotta go a little bit more and we're gonna feel crushing that washer like there. And then once it gets to a point where you're just gonna stop and then don't go any farther because you could strip out the threads on the chainsaw. So again, when you get to this point, make sure you don't get anything down the engine and it should just thread in very easily. I would thread this by hand. Just get it nice and lined up. And again, by hand, you should feel the thread start. Don't cross it. You should be able to thread that all the way down. Make sure that part is on there. This part will want to, this part may want to come off, but make sure that's on there. I've got it to where it stops. And now we're going to put it on with the ratchet. Make sure your socket's all the way on it. Again, I gotta crush that washer. You can breathe in there, right there, it stops. Okay, spark plugs in. Now we're just gonna put the electrode back on, the wire. You should feel it kind of grab and go all the way down there. It's all the way on. We're gonna put this piece back on. Oh, it's still dirty, we're gonna clean it up. So this piece just slides right in those grooves. Now we gotta Here's our old filter. It is filthy. Here's our new one. Make sure that opening, make sure we're gonna take the, we're gonna take all of the paper out because that's gonna go there and there. So make sure this is all nice and clean. Now I am going to spray a little carb cleaner down here. So I've got some carb and choke cleaner. The guy said at the, at the steel place that if it's hard to start, you may just need to kind of clean this out a little bit. I'm going to try to get this to where you can see it. You want to kind of hold it, tilt it, so that it runs out when you spray it. Okay, so I let that air dry a little bit and I turned it kind of on its side to get all this, let all the card cleaner run out. Now we're just gonna put this on. Oops, I may have that the wrong way. So I wanna show you, first you gotta line up, see the screws go there, so line those up and then it should slide right on, yeah. Make sure you get the uh, the rubber O-ring on that part. And then we're just gonna take the screws. We don't need to, we don't need to tighten these down super tight. Just do one at a time. Yeah, just nice and slow. Now I forget how this goes. Does it go this way? I thought it goes that way. Yeah, that's it. That's how it goes like that. So that screen, that screen goes down in the groove. And then we're ready to put our cover on. Good time to change the fuel filter. It's inside the fuel tank. Is when your um, when your gas tank's empty. So my gas tank's almost empty, so we're gonna give it a try. Highly recommend gloves. When you pop this open, be careful, it can spray at you. So we gotta look down in there, there's a, there's a hose floating around in there. So get you like some long needle nose, because you're gonna have to go down in there and, and fetch that, that hose. Make sure that your needle noses are nice and clean. 
fetch the hose, bring it up out, try not to tear it, and there's the fuel filter. So here's the new fuel filter. We're just gonna pinch that hose, pull it off. There's some gas in it, we're just gonna push, push the new one on. And then you just let it float around in there. So there's the old fuel filter. So again, my ball came out, but there's a, there's a track for the ball right there. So get your needle nose and put that Put that ball back in the track. This just helps prevent you from losing your, your cap. There. Now when I close this, my cap should stay nice and secure. Okay, so I'm going to put fuel in it. I highly recommend using Steel's um, two-cycle oil. Because it's, it's fully synthetic, but it also has a stabilizer in there that stabilizes the fuel. So if your fuel stays in there for more than a couple months, it's going to be okay. So the part you're going to need is a three-quarter inch socket, straight slot, and some long needle nose. And you might have to uh, gap it, but I didn't have to gap mine, my spark plug. And again, this is the service kit for the MS290. 20 bucks. So I highly recommend getting you a little one gallon gas tank. That way you can just throw this in there and fill it up with one gallon of gas. That's the perfect ratio. Label the heck out of it, two stroke, two stroke. Uh, your kids will find, I found my kids putting this in my lawnmower. It doesn't hurt the lawnmower, but it just wastes the gas, so. Okay, so I fired it up. After doing this, it started on the first pull. The last time I was using this, I think I cranked on it. I must have pulled on it 50 times before it finally started. So if your chainsaw is getting hard to start, buy that service kit, that's gonna fix the hard starting. Shoot a little carb cleaner in there when you've got it out. But I am super impressed. I got my chainsaw back because it was getting so hard to start. Another thing, um, if it's not running right, you can get some buildup inside here. Take these bolts off and there's a screen in there. That's the um, spark arrestor. It can get covered. So if it's bogging down and not running at full speed, take that apart and that you clean, there's a screen you clean, it gets coated with carbon. So again, I had it without it. So make sure you got your chain on and everything, but um, I'm just super impressed with that kit. That kit brought back to life my chainsaw. So thanks everybody for watching. And if you could, please like and subscribe.